A little over a year before this video, James Gunn revealed some of the plan for the beginning of his universe called the DCU, which revealed 10 upcoming projects, and in that year, we've gotten a surprisingly large amount of details regarding these 10 projects, although certainly some more than others, as well as two additional projects confirmed for the chapter, and in this video I'll be going over all these details, including every confirmed character, everyone cast, the release dates, the writers, the directors, and any additional information, and let me tell you, every project, aside from just one has had at least some additional information about it revealed, and many of these projects have had a lot of them, especially the ones that are closest to release. Most of the release dates are unconfirmed, but I will be going in order of how close I think the project is to coming out, based mostly on the amount of information we have about it. To start things off is Creature Commandos, a 7 22 minute episode long animated series airing on Mac, so it will be the first fully canon project in the DCU, and will release in the fall of 2024. As of the making of this video, some constant concept art was seemingly released, and an image of a piece of merch showed the first actual official look at the series. In the comics, the Creature Commandos were a World War II monster team working for the American military with members based on classic monsters. The series will be changing quite a bit, however, setting the show in the present day and making the Commandos into a monster-based suicide squad created by Amanda Waller, and with a very different lineup. Written and showrun by James Gunn and animated by Bobby Pill Studios, Creature Commandos seems to have been in development from before the DCEU was rebooted as it does fit into the DCEU continuity. In fact, several DCEU characters are being moved to the DCU, including Viola Davis's Amanda Waller, Steve Agee's Johnny Conomos, Sean Gunn's Weasel, and Rick Flagg's father, Rick Flagg Sr., played by Frank Grillo, which I guess canonizes Joel Kinnaman's Rick Flagg Jr. Sean Gunn will also be playing G.I. Robot, who is a World War II combat robot who hates Nazis. Other members include The Bride of Frankenstein, or just The Bride, voiced by India Rivar, who Gunn said will act as the main character, Eric Frankenstein, voiced by David Harbour, Batman villain Dr. Phosphorus, voiced by Alan Tudyk, and Nina Mazursky, voiced by Zoe Chow. Additionally, Maria Bakalovo will voice an original character named Princess Ilana Rostovic, who likely comes from a fictional Eastern European country, and Anya Shalatra will play the Wonder Woman villain Cersei, suggesting that Creature Commandos might connect to Paradise Lost, since it makes a lot of sense for Cersei to appear there in live action that time around. For now, Creature Commandos is the only animated project in the DCU, but it certainly will not be the last. But also, as James Gunn has stated, the way the DCU will work with animation is that characters can appear in both animation and live action and will be played by the same actor in both. But while characters can voice more than one character like Sean Gunn, David Harbour, Maria Bakalova, and Alan Tudyk will do in Creature Commandos, they can't play more than one character in live action. The comic that this show is said to take inspiration from is Weird War Tales 93, which was the Commandos' first appearance in the comics, although the show will be completely reinventing the team, so I doubt it will draw much inspiration from the comics at all. In fact, there's only really one member in common with the classic team, and that's Frankenstein, and his name was changed to Eric Frankenstein. Waller will be a spin-off show of Peacemaker, meaning it's a spin-off of a spin-off that takes place in a different universe, which is a spin-off of a pseudo-sequel to Suicide Squad, airing on Max and apparently in 2024. Waller was written as well by James Gunn, and will have a far more serious tone than Peacemaker, in a story that continues the Peacemaker finale where Leota Adebayo, Waller's daughter, unveiled the Suicide Squad to the world. The art used for this series suggests that Amanda Waller will be arrested for this. Viola Davis reprises her role alongside other members of Team Peacemaker, including Johnny Conomo specifically, which is the one and only update we got regarding the show since the Gods and Monsters video. The showrunners will be Crystal Henry, who show ran Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who show ran Doom Patrol, some of DC's better shows. Waller will take inspiration from a Suicide Squad story from the 90s called The Phoenix Gambit, and while it's been said that the show will air in 2024, I can see the recent strikes pushing that off into 2025. Still, I would definitely expect it before Superman Legacy. Speaking of, the first movie in the DCU is Superman Legacy. We already knew quite a lot about Superman Legacy from the initial announcement video, such as that it will be a live-action theatrically released movie written by James Gunn coming out on July 11th, 2025, and takes inspiration from All-Star Superman, Henry Cavill won't be returning in the role, and that it will not be an origin story, but Clark will be younger. Since then, we've learned quite a bit about this movie, including the majority of the cast. In fact, James Gunn said that while there are characters who are uncast, every single character 
character who will be in the first table read has been cast and has been announced. David Cornsweet is the new Superman, Rachel Brosnahan is the new Lois Lane, Skylar Gazzondo will play Jimmy Olsen, Nicholas Holt will play Lex Luthor, Sarah Sampiao will play Eve Tessmacher, and Millie Alcock will play Kara Zor-El aka Supergirl. Legacy will also include many non-Superman characters as well, which we didn't know until the day they were cast. Hawkgirl will be played by Isabella Merced, most likely Kendra Saunders, it was recently hinted by her that it will be. Guy Gardner, aka Green Lantern, played by Nathan Fillion. Michael Holt, aka Mr. Terrific, played by Eddie Gathagy. Rex Mason, aka Metamorpho, played by Anthony Carrigan. And Angela Spica, aka The Engineer, played by Maria Gabriela de Faria. The uncast confirmed characters include Perry White, Crypto the Superdog, and while it's unconfirmed, other members of the Authority, like Jack Hawksmore and the Doctor, as well as Steve Lombard or Cat Grant from The Daily Planet, have all been rumored and seem likely to appear. Also, Sean Gunn has been cast as Maxwell Lord in a non-specific project, and while it's confirmed he'll be referenced, it's been said that he might cameo as well in Superman Legacy, which will begin filming in March, very soon after the making of this video. After having written the script, James Gunn was also later confirmed to be directing as well, making it his fifth comic book movie and seventh comic book project overall that he's directing. Alongside James Gunn, every single important role in this movie has been filled. John Murphy is the composer, Stephen Caretti as VFX supervisor, Henry Braham as cinematographer, Beth Mickle as production designer, Juliana Makovsky as costume designer, and Wayne Dalglish as supervising stunt coordinator. And beyond that, again, every single role in the making of this movie has been filled as well. Like seriously, the production on this movie in the single year that we've known about it has been some of the smoothest I've ever seen, especially for a DC movie. From there are two projects that seem to be a lot closer to production than anything else, both connected to the already mentioned projects. Peacemaker Season 2 was not mentioned in the Gods and Monsters video, but was pretty soon after that confirmed to still be happening. Season 2 has been written by and will be directed by James Gunn, and will be an unusual case for a second season, not only because it'll release a good four years after Season 1, but also it'll take place in an entirely different universe. And that will actually be a part of the story, as James Gunn confirmed that the show will actually address the universe change, although it will not be the primary story of the season. The characters who have been confirmed to be returning include John Cena's Peacemaker, Freddy Stromer's Vigilante, Jennifer Holland's Amelia Harcourt, Daniela Brooks, Leora Adebayo, Steve Agee's John Economos, and D. Bradley Baker's Eagly. Although we should certainly expect Nut Lee's Judo Master and Robert Patrick's Augie Smith, who was set up to be a hallucination that Peacemaker will have to deal with again in this season, meaning all these characters who existed in the DCEU will also somehow now exist in the DCU. We'll see how that happens. Given that many characters from the season 1 intro are now dead, season 2 will have a new one, although it's unclear if that means the song will change as well. Peacemaker season 2 will air its 8 episodes on max at some point after Superman Legacy, meaning after July 11th, 2025. But maybe not that much later, as James Gunn mentioned that production is not so far away on Peacemaker season 2, I can see them beginning filming even in 2024. From here on out, nothing has been revealed regarding the release dates of these upcoming projects, but I'll be going in order of what seems closest to release, just based off of my opinion. The next project that seems closest to being made is actually Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, which will be a live-action theatrically released movie described as a big science fiction epic and beautiful star-spanning tale, featuring a version of Supergirl that is far more jaded than Superman or most other portrayals, with focus on her backstory in witnessing her planet being destroyed as a young girl, and taking inspiration and actually adapting the Tom King story of the same name, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow will be written by Anna Nogueira, who was actually previously hired to write a Supergirl movie that never got made, that would have starred Sasha Kale. Replacing Sasha Kale as Supergirl is House of the Dragons' Millie Alcock, as I mentioned earlier, and now in her second appearance in this universe. Also appearing are Ruthie Marie Null, who was the secondary main character and narrator of the comic book story, as well as Crypto, who had a relatively large role in the original comic, and and this will also be his second appearance in this universe. This certainly seems like the most straightforward adaptation of a comic book story with the same title and basic story tenets and characters, however there will most certainly be some changes as the original story is fairly episodic in nature and has a relatively forgettable villain that they might switch out for an iconic Superman or Supergirl villain. Aside from Supergirl being cast and a writer being chosen, James Gunn is currently looking for a director and confirmed that the movie could go into production as soon as 
as this fall, which would to me suggest a 2026 release date, maybe even early 2026. A second spin-off of Superman Legacy that has also cast one of its characters is The Authority, the most surprising project announced in the Gods and Monsters video featuring the most obscure characters. The Authority were described as, the world is completely broken and the only way to fix it is to take things into their own hands, whether that means killing people, destroying heads of state, changing governments, whatever they want to do. The writers and directors have not been confirmed and I'd say this definitely feels further away than Supergirl for instance, but at the very least one member of the Authority has been cast. As I mentioned earlier, Maria Gabriela de Faria will play the engineer in Superman Legacy before reprising her role here. Also mentioned earlier, the Doctor and Jack Hawksmoor have been rumored to appear in Superman Legacy, leaving Midnighter, Apollo, Jenny Sparks, and Swift to be confirmed. I can see them leaving out Swift given her similarities to Hawkgirl and Jenny Sparks given she's pretty exclusive to the 20th century, but Midnighter and Apollo will absolutely 100% appear. Matthew Vaughn has been rumored to be attached as director, but that's not been confirmed. The Authority takes comic inspiration from The Authority's first volume, which is their debut story, and I would expect it in maybe later 2026. The Brave and the Bold will be a theatrically released live-action Batman movie that will release concurrently with the Batman movie starring Robert Pattinson that will remain standalone, focusing on a Batman who is slightly older than Superman as he learns he has a biological son named Damien, who was raised by the League of Assassins, in a movie that takes primary inspiration from Grant Morrison's entire late 2000s run on Batman and early 2010s, which is where Damian Wayne was introduced. It's also where Dick Grayson became Batman after Batman's apparent death in Final Crisis, and in fact the art used for this movie does not feature Bruce Wayne at all, it features Dick Grayson as Batman. But apparently that didn't really mean anything, as Batman will be Bruce Wayne in this movie, and alongside Batman and Robin, who will act as dual main characters. Other members of the Bat family will appear, for now both Nightwing and Cassandra Cain have been confirmed to be appearing in the universe, with this being absolutely the most likely place to do so. While The Authority has one character cast and no director yet, The Brave and the Bold is kind of the other way around. Nobody's been cast yet, and Gun confirmed they aren't really that close to casting anyone. However, the director is now attached and has been confirmed to be Andy Machete, who does admittedly have a bit of experience directing Batman as he directed The Flash, which featured Michael Keaton's Batman in a large role, as well as Ben Affleck's Batman in a smaller role. The only thing we know regarding the release date of The Brave and the Bold is that it'll be at least six months after the Batman part. 2, which will release in October 2025, so April 2026 at the very earliest, but I wouldn't expect it until maybe even early 2027, as they probably should have at least one year gap between live action Batman movies. The Brave and the Bull did seem to be completely standalone from the rest of the universe, at least from the get go, right up until almost a year after it was announced, when it was confirmed by James Gunn that the live action Arkham TV show produced by Matt Reeves that was initially confirmed to take place in the Batverse will actually take place in the DCU, and apparently it was always going to take place in the DCU. Showrun written and directed by one Antonio Campos, Arkham will air on Max and will apparently have a horror tone that depicts Arkham as a haunted house. We should certainly expect some Arkham staffers like Jeremiah Arkham and Aaron Cash, many Batman villains, and maybe even characters like James Gordon, or even, at one point or another, a Bat family member or two. I could see Arkham releasing before The Brave and the Bold, potentially even in late 20. 25, but it could also easily be after. Also with a confirmed director at this point is Swamp Thing, which will be a live-action, theatrically released movie directed by James Mangold. In his third comic book movie, which he described as his passion project, the comic used as the art for this movie is Swamp Thing the Winter Special, but James Gunn has said that the movie will take primary inspiration from Alan Moore's run on Swamp Thing, which is where the character was reinvented. Like Arkham, Swamp Thing was described as a gothic horror and that it will explore the dark origin of Swamp Thing. I would expect it either in 2026 or honestly in 2027. Lanterns will be a live action Max series that will follow Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart in a true detective inspired buddy cop mystery that takes place primarily on Earth and explores a mystery that connects directly to the main plot of the chapter. The art used for the series is Green Lantern Earth 1, while the comic touted as primary inspiration is Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, although neither of these comics sound anything like the plot of the series so I'm not sure where where they take inspiration. The biggest and honestly only thing we've learned since the Gods and Monsters video regarding lanterns is that Nathan Fillion's Guy Gardner will appear following his appearance in Superman Legacy. I, however, would not expect the series for quite a while. 2026 or even 2027 seem likely. 
Paradise Lost will be another live-action Max series confirmed in the announcement video. Paradise Lost will follow the Amazons on Themyscira prior to Diana's birth, described as a political drama about the scheming and power struggles on the old female island of Themyscira and inspired by Game of Thrones. The art used for the series was of the Amazonians from the 36th issue of the New 52 Wonder Woman comic series, but since then we've learned of a few comics that the series will take inspiration from, including Wonder Woman Paradise Lost, Wonder Woman History of the Amazons, Wonder Woman in the circle, and George Perez's post-crisis run on Wonder Woman. It does seem very likely to me that Paradise Lost will connect to Creature Commandos, as I mentioned earlier, as Cersei's agelessness will allow her appearance, played by Anna Shalatra, jumping from animation to live action. With not much new details regarding this series, Paradise Lost isn't looking to release for a good while probably 2027. And finally, the only project we haven't learned anything new about since the announcement video is Booster Gold, which will be a live-action comedy max series that follows Mike Carter, a disgraced former football star in the 25th century, who travels back in time to pose as a superhero using basic future technology. As Booster Gold, Mike is a superhero with imposter syndrome. Booster Gold will take inspiration from the 2007 run on Booster Gold, and while it's unconfirmed, I could certainly see this being where Blue Beetle returns. Throughout this video, I've mentioned a few characters who've been confirmed for the DCU, but not for any specific project. There's Zoa Maradona's Blue Beetle, Sean Gunn's Maxwell Lord, Nightwing, Cassandra Kane, and Wonder Woman. Adding to that list, Mary McCabe aka Vixen and Virgil Hawkins aka Static have been confirmed, while Terra, John Kent, Kyle Rayner, and the one I'm sad about, Roy Harper, have all been confirmed to not be appearing, at least in Chapter 1. So that's it for this video, everything one year later that we know about the DCU. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe to Wibbly Bibble, and bye.